You do. Two on a Sunday. Ooh. But when you gotta, you gotta. So I just watched Greg, the tunnel take. And if you know Greg from the tunnel take, you know his videos make you think. And if they don't make you think, then you're brain dead. Just saying. I was watching. I was listening. And he got down towards the end. And he mentioned, you know, Uncle Willie. And he says, you know, he don't, he don't, he don't pray for recovery because that might not be God's will. And that's where my problem comes in. So now, in what I was going to text to Father Brian Potter Piper, I'm now going to put on the YouTubes. So if you don't want to hear about religion, God, and whatnot, you know, y'all go on back to whatever you were doing before you got the little ding. I put a video up, okay? Let me give you my background. I was saved when I was 13. We were active in church, youth group, choir, yada, yada, yada. Then, through the years, I kind of left the church because I came back. And I had joined the Christian Motorcyclist Association and started a chapter in Ashtabula County, which is about an hour that way, and became president of said chapter. Life was good. You know, I had I had married. I had I had youngins. Life was good. But then life wasn't good. Things started going bad in the marriage. Some say it was me, some say it was her. Me, I say it was us. Because it took two to make it and it takes two to break it. Don't care how you put it. That's the way it is. So when the church that my wife and I belong to found out we were getting divorced, I was asked to leave. She got to stay. So she got custody of the church. When the Christian Motorcyclist Association, or at least the state of Ohio's leader, because I don't think it ever went any further than the state of Ohio's leader, found out that we were getting a divorce, I was no longer, I can no longer be president of this chapter, even though at that time we were the biggest and most active chapter in the state of Ohio. So I moved on. <clears throat> Divorce is final. I move out. She got custody of the house. That ain't my, that's no problem to me. I'm, I was more than welcome to let her keep the house. Then I met Cindy. And things started looking up. Things were good. I was, I was working good. Things were doing good. 
And at the time, Cindy happened to live halfway between here because I was back here. I always come back here. And the dedicated run that I was doing, she was halfway. And we ran these at night. So she says, hey, instead of driving the extra hour back here, I could come to her house and sleep. So she was gone. She went to work. That's how I ended up moving in with Cindy before we got married. But then we got married, and things were great. We were doing great. Everything was good. I mean, everything was perfect. I had a stroke, recovered. Everything was perfect. And Cindy and I were, after we got married, we, got, we, were, we were involved in church again. And also, did I tell you I was also ordained back way back the first time around okay now you know and then cindy gets sick and gets rushed to gets gets rushed to the hospital on the way to the hospital she has a heart attack she gets there and they immediately take her into surgery and put a stent or whatever they do she never regains consciousness. For a week, and this was doing the thing. You know what that is, because if I say it, then this gets all the little propaganda. I get to go, only one, only one was allowed to go, so it's me because... I am now, I'm not working because my wife is in the hospital. And her two, her two have jobs. So I get to go sit in a hallway and look at her through the window for two hours a day. So I time it so I can be there when the doctor comes and makes their rounds. And they explained the numbers that they're writing on the window and everything. And the numbers started getting better. Until they started getting bad. And then one day, and I knew it was, I knew that something was up when I got there for my two hours. And I sat down in that chair, and the doctor came over and pulled up a chair and sat down and said, either she's going to go into a nursing home like this, hooked to a machine, or we're going to have to Pull the plug. And I said, when do you need an answer? And she goes, well, the sooner the better. And I said, well, I can't, I can't make this decision alone. I need to bring them into the situation. So I call them. They come to the house. We sit down. Tell them, and they both look at each other and say, yeah, it's time. That's because they knew what they were getting, but that's a different story. I don't want to go down there. So the next day, go, boom. I sit there. They come in. They do everything. She's gone. Now, this comes to my
question. How can the all loving God do that? Why would that be his will? Cindy never even uttered a curse word in the 15 years we were together. She was active in church. And then, how could this all-loving, merciful God take away everything we worked for because I tried to save everything that we took, that we, we did. Cindy was going to retire the following year and we were going to enjoy life retired. We had, a, we had the money to live on. We had everything. And I tried to save that. Why, how, how could that be God's will for me to end up here? Rebuilding. And by the way, it's a lot harder to rebuild than build. I'm going to tell you that right now. So, Father Brian, I respect you. I respect your position. Explain it to me. My mom, my sister Rita, who's not my sister, every week you need to be back in church. I can't. In just the three years that I've been here, I have been knocked down more times than I can get than I can re, I can ever remember being knocked down. This is not the life I had planned. I truly question whether or not there is a God. Some people got that kind of faith. I know of a few people that have lost their spouse and they continue being active in church and ministry and stuff. I don't, I can't. Not at this time anyways. That jackass is going to get shot 
before nightfall. If you can't hear, three days he's, he's been shooting off fireworks. The police in the city of Minner no longer do their job. Ah. Anyways, hope you guys have a good evening. We'll be fine. We'll get there. Wake up. See y'all tomorrow.